Okay, we're going to talk about section 5.3 today. And I'm not going to tell you yet what the name of this subject or this section is. I've got Baby Yoda with us. I thought, you know, all of these videos, we're talking about so much math and <clears throat> numbers and functions and graphs. I thought it might be a good idea for each different section to have a different little buddy with us. And then that'll help us remember, um, you know, kind of... Uh, keep each one distinct. Okay. I'm going to draw a picture of a function here and you tell me what type of function you think this is. So we've got two different concavities, concave down, concave up, an inflection point somewhere in here. One is going to negative infinity, one is going to positive infinity. This is definitely a, starts with a C, this is a cubic function. And we've seen those before. This one happens to be f of x equals 8x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. Okay, what if we saw a function that looked like this? Straight line. This is um, what type of function? Linear. And it might be something like f of x equals 1.2 x minus 2. We've got the slope and the y-intercept here. One more. Um, say that we came across something like this, a parabola. And this one's an upside-down parabola. <clears throat> this is a, an example of a function. It starts with a q, and it's quadratic. This one, quadratics always have their highest power is a squared term on the variable. And we know that this leading coefficient is negative because the parabola is pointing down. Okay, these are some examples of functions that we've already seen. Today we get a brand new one. Example one. And I'm first going to show you the graph of this function and then we'll talk about its equation and why it looks like it does. So this is new. This is nothing like anything we've ever seen before. We've got, a, the red is the function. So we've got a piece of the function that is going up, 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 up. And then all of a sudden we have this part where it just breaks off and then it rejoins back down from negative infinity coming up and then goes up to positive infinity again. And then again, this sort of wall, this break where the function can't seem to cross. And then it comes from down negative infinity and it'll go off. <clears throat> the x values will keep going. This is the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 over 2x squared minus x minus 10. This is a new type of function. This is called a rational function. That name seems to fit because Ratios remind us of fractions, and this is definitely some type of fractiony thing. We've got a polynomial over another polynomial, and that's how rational functions always go. Um, <clears throat> by definition, a rational function looks like this. f of x equals p of x over q of x and p and q are always polynomials. The polynomials could be degree 3, degree 5, degree 1, even degree 0, but it's always a polynomial over a polynomial. And we get these sort of new shapey things. Um, the big question with rational functions you know, one of the big deals in math is you can never have a fraction with a zero in the denominator. And so this becomes a big question for rational functions. When is the denominator equal to zero? We have to look out for those, those times because we can't let our inputs create that. So big question number one for rational functions is the denominator ever zero. 
we really don't want that to happen so we find out where it could happen and we um, uh, take note of those places. So in this particular case we ask when will, let's see the denominator is this guy right here, when will this whole expression equal zero? 2x squared minus x minus 10 equals zero. And there's a few different ways we could solve this. We could solve it algebraically um, by factoring and solving it. You could actually also just graph this um, as a function and find out where um, the y value is zero. Where does it hit the x-axis? And you'd also be able to find <clears throat> the points that create a zero. So you could do it graphically. You could graph to see where that happens. Right now we're going to do we're going to factor and solve it. So this guy to factor quadratics factor as, hopefully, if they're nice, they factor as two binomials. This one, we would need a 2x and an x, 2x squared. And then we need two numbers that multiply to negative 10. Um, but also we'll create this middle term. And we'll try this guy out. Let's see, 2x squared plus 4x minus 5x. 4x minus 5x will give us negative x, that's good. And then multiply these two and we get a negative 10. So that seems to work. That factors. And then, um, of course, each of these factors could be creating the 0, so we solve them separately. When is 2x minus 5 equal to 0? That happens if 2x equals 5 or x equals 5 halves. Um, or when does x plus 2 equal 0? That happens when x equals negative 2. Okay. These are the x values that would make this equation 0, which would make this equation 0, which would make the denominator of a rational function 0. So in other words, f of 5 halves, this f, if we were to plug in 5 halves for every single x, we would get something on the top over 0. Also, f of negative 2. If we were to take this negative 2 and plug it back into the function negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, we would get something on the top over 0. And this is totally not allowed. So this is undefined. So we have to say, well, x should never be allowed for this function to be 5 halves and x cannot be negative 2. Those we have to take out of the domain. Any other um, real number is totally legal to plug into this function. But these two, have they are not invited. They cannot go into the function. And graphically, we see that. We see that when x equals negative 2, the function itself seems to know. It's like, whoa, stay away from that number. And we'll come back up over here, but do not touch this x value. And then even again, here at 2 and a half or 5 halves, the function seems to know stay away from that x value because it's going to create a 0 in the denominator. Okay, <clears throat> so um, what we see here, I'm going to, this is the same function, but now um, we've sort of drawn in these blue dotted lines to indicate that the function has to stay away from those two x values, negative two and two and a half. And these are called um, vertical asymptotes. And they're a big deal with rational functions. So vertical asymptotes The formal definition of a vertical asymptote is you'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals a if as x approaches the value a, like here we were approaching negative 2 or, or 5 halves, the function goes or approaches, goes off to positive or negative infinity. This is what a vertical asymptote is. And we see examples, the two examples in this function right here. Okay, so we know what a rational function is now. We know what a vertical asymptote is. 
We're going to look at a second example. Before we go on to example two, I should tell you the name of the section is, this is all about rational functions. For example two, I'm going to give you the equation of the function first. It's another rational function. It's f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 over x minus 2. <clears throat> Definitely a rational function. We have a quadratic over a linear um, polynomial. And, but if you graph this rational function, this is what you get. So this definitely doesn't look like example one. This actually looks like just a straight line with a little tiny hole and then more of a straight line. What's going on here that wasn't going on with the last example? Why are we getting a hole and not, an, uh, and not a vertical asymptote? Wait, where did Baby Yoda go? Well, this one is a little different than example one. If we were to factor the numerator here, it is a quadratic and it actually does factor. We'll leave the denominator as x minus 2, but this one we'll rewrite as, let's see, 2x and x. And we need two numbers that multiply to positive 2. So 2x squared minus 4x minus x, that'll give us a negative 5x plus 2. <clears throat> this is how it factors. Okay, and so you all see what's going on here. We have this um, factor, this common factor. We have an x minus 2 up here and an x minus 2 down here. Technically, we, <coughs> we can't really cancel them out. But because it is part of the original function and... For sure, x should never be allowed to be equal 2 because that will create a 0 in the denominator. And this whole accounts for that. But everywhere else in the function, you really could cancel these. Like if x equals 2.1, these cancel. If x equals 1.9, these cancel. Um, and when they cancel, this function behaves it's just the 2x minus 1 that's left, and it behaves like this, which is definitely a linear function. And in fact, it's this linear function. Um, but this whole is uh, created by the fact that we can never let x equals 2, x equal 2. So here, the, the difference between this and example 1 is we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. And so that common factor creates something called a removable discontinuity. or a hole. Okay, let's look at a third example to help round out everything. And here again, I'm going to give you the, uh, I'll give you the function. And then we'll look at a, the graph. Here we have f of x equals 2x minus 1 times x minus 2 over x plus 3 times x minus 2. <clears throat> if you multiplied all this out, you'd get a quadratic. If you multiplied all this out, you'd get a quadratic. So we have a quadratic over a quadratic that is a polynomial over a polynomial. So we're definitely, this is definitely a rational function here. Okay, big question with rational functions is where could the denominator equal 0? we see that there's two spots that would create a zero. If x were allowed to be negative three, or if x were equal to two, we would have a problem. So what would we expect? Do we expect two vertical asymptotes? Do we expect holes? Do we expect one of each? Do we expect something new? So this is a picture of this function. <clears throat> and we do get a vertical asymptote and we do get a hole, so we get one of each. The vertical asymptote happens at x equals negative 3. Uh, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 10. So this is negative 3. x equals negative 3. And 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is x equals 2. 
why, um, first of all, why are we getting a whole at x equals 2? This rational function does have a common factor of x minus 2 in the numerator and denominator. So this common factor will produce a whole, a removable discontinuity at x equals 2. This problem spot in the denominator, if x equals negative 3, this factor um, has no one to in the numerator to um, cancel out with, or no common factor in the numerator. So when that happens, we get a vertical asymptote. And so this part right here is creating a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. We'll talk more about um, these and we'll talk about, there's a lot to talk about with rational functions, but so far you know what a rational function is. You know what a vertical asymptote is and you've seen when that happens and you know what a whole or a removable discontinuity is and you've seen examples of when that happens. And we'll talk more in the next video, discontinuity, about um, other things with rational functions. All right.